Greetings and welcome back one and all to Pillars of Eternity, where we have just slain a spider queen and gotten Glindur some bloody amazing loot. And we also enchanted his weapons as well. Come to think of it, I probably should check out enchanting this, but I think I have just used up a lot of his uh, stuff on that. Though it seems that by going with fine, yeah, I got rid of damaging one. That, make, that makes a lot of sense, honestly, because it basically combines damaging one with accuracy one. So, you know, that makes perfect sense. It would be very nice to be able to get some of those, though. So what we need are Pilgrim's Crown. These small golden flowers grow across the enti uh, entire meadow in the plains of Ixmatil, and less commonly in Deerwood. They are frequently woven into garlands and wreaths. Many a pair of infatuated youths has passed a Pilgrim's Crown beneath between them. Aww, that's sweet. But uh, that's what we're going to be looking for to be able to upgrade that pistol. I'm going to have to keep an eye out on these sorts of things. Now, there were a couple of things that we didn't do in the last episode, and one of them was checking out uh, uh, Mirwald's Grimoire. We've got Spirit Shield. Surrounds the caster with a shield of spirit energy, granting an increased damage reduction and concentration bonus. Thrust of Tattered Veils. A quick strike of crushing force, dealing little damage, but having a high chance to disrupt enemy spellcasters. So that might actually be very useful. We'll get Eloth to learn that one. We've also got a bulwark against the elements. Creatures of a mystic, uh, creates a mystical shield around the caster, suffusing them with bonus burn, freeze, corrode, and shock damage reductions. So Mirwald had a lot of good spells for dealing with protecting himself, and I honestly I can see our good friend Aloth here needing that. So with that Hi. done, let's go ahead and oh. I can talk to Eloth more. Ha ha! Found you. It looks like with quiet attentiveness. How may I be of service? Ah, oh, damn it. We can't. We can't seem to discuss whatever went on with Eloth over there. Um, but I, I'm certain I... now. I'm, I'm really getting a good idea that uh, Eloth is, has got two souls. Ooh, what have I got going on there? Why don't I not use those? Maybe. There we go. All right, we'll take that one. We'll take this one. Here. Hmm. Barely ever use Fetid Caress. The target becomes paralyzed, flitted with boiling pustules of foul. Hmm. Well, maybe. Paralyzing, sickened. Actually, that's not a bad one. Corrosive Siphon. Endurance. Yeah, that's probably a good one as well. Blinded Sight. But I would rather get rid of this one and go with Bulwark against the Elements. Perhaps I shouldn't be trying to build up something which would give me a defensive thing. Maybe I should have two grimoires, one for specifically combat spells and one for defensive spells, and then alternate between them based on how Aloth needs help. Oh, I've got so many in here that I can learn. Right, that one's a definite keeper. How about you? Any that we can't... Oh, okay, good. All right, we don't need this grimoire. That one's going to be sold. What about you? Still more that we can learn, so we'll keep that one. And you, we've learned everything that you had, so that one can be... Oh, actually, do any of these have... No, they don't have any sort of special um, powers to by having them, so we're not going to worry too much about it. Eventually... We'll learn all of the spells in these, or just set up a grimoire which is primarily for defensive close combat sort of spells, and one that is more for the regular nuking down AoE kind of stuff. Or maybe one for, for regular nu um, AoE, and the other one just for pure uh, taking on bosses, so direct damage to a single target. I'll have to consider that. I'll probably do that off camera at some point, I think. Let's see what lies now. This can we get over there? No, not easily. We have to go around this way. That's fine. I think we've more or less explored this area, and the next thing I want to do is go and find the uh, the steward. Oh, hello. How about you two? Run this way. Go quickly. There we are. Go around the other side. Right. Grindur, switch to this one. Switch to your new weapons. Get in there and attack, please. Bring you up here. Also drop this on them. That should be fine. Can you cast these ones indefinitely? No, not yet. How about you? You're actually still hurt. That was not good. 
Right, can you please knock the stone beetle over? There we go, fantastic. Don't worry, you big Nancy. <laughs> oh my lord. I'm starting to, to absorb Arumba's insults. This isn't a good sign. Uh, let's go for you. I would like you to definitely be taking part. Let's get you down there. Use that. There we go. I can't wait until we get to the point where you no longer have to uh, use up your... Use up casts for your low level abilities. Well done. The wood beetle is almost gone. There we are. Jolting touch manages to hit. Fantastic. Right. Glindur, then move in. There we go. Both of them got hit with that. Uh, you can summon something. Attacks fortitude requires three phase enchant. Reduces damage reduction of enemies in the area of effect. Make it so. Okay. Is that going to affect him? No. Let's move in a little bit closer then. Yes. That'll do, because I'm imagining that creature has a fairly good damage re reduction. It's a stone beetle. The name stone gives me the impression that it can just tank a lot. There we go. Just finish him off. There we are. Fantastic work, guys. Okay. Yes. Right, well, let's uh, pick their bodies clean. There we go. But uh, someone asked me to check out the bestiary. So, journal... Quest, no, bestiary. Here we go. We've got a load of things in here. I haven't been keeping up with it at all. Uh, let's check out... What was it that they wanted me to look at? Um, I actually forget. Forest Troll. Here we are. These gangly giants stand twice the height of average humans. Their bodies are covered in large fungal growths which leak foul-smelling pus-like fluid. Their oversized hands and feet extend to giant claws capable of rending a man in two. Dozens of slimy tendrils hang loosely from atop their oversized head, and their vast maws are filled with jagged, razor-sharp teeth. Trolls have long faces, long chins, long noses, and tangled masses of wiry, fungus-infected hair on top of their heads. They have never been observed to use weapons, tools, or clothing. Looking at a troll, it can be difficult to tell whether they've evolved in harmony with lichen, moss, and fungi, or whether they've been overtaken by them. A troll's natural cl uh, clammy flesh provides the ideal growing environment for these plants. They provide camouflage as well as some protection from the elements, and the enzymes they produce often uh, also offers limite uh, substances for trolls in lean times. Because of their symbiosis with these plants, trolls generally dwell in heavily wooded areas, although some may occasionally be seen in damp underground environments that also house an abundance of lichens and fungi. But there you go. If there is anything that someone wants me to read out of the bestiary, just let me know in the comments, and it'll probably be a couple of episodes before I get to that, because I tend to record in a batch, but I will do my best to read whatever it is that you're interested in, but uh, let's go and have a look at the stone beetle before we leave. Beetles are not quite man-sized, but they strike a sufficiently intimidating form to frighten off most travellers. The alarmingly large insects never fail to impress and terrify visitors and reinforce the images of the Diewood as a barely civilised backwater. The expansive wilderness in and around Diewood and Ir Glamfath gives beetles plenty of room to multiply. The most successful species of large beetle have evolved to not only camouflage themselves in the surrounding environment, but also to grow carapaces made out of uh, com como and hardy materials, probably common and hardy materials, such as wood, stone and ardra. Glamfathan tribes have been known to fashion crude shields and even weapons out of the limbs and shells of these beetles. Despite all appearances to the contrary, there is an underlying complexity to the common beetle. When they choose a material which, with which to develop their shell, they do so with a level of intention that borders on artistry. Wood beetles will often burrow intricate holes in their carapaces by blowing air through these makeshift pipes. They play an eerie music to attract mates. Stone beetles fashion rudimentary tusks and horns that help them to defend themselves and to attack prey. The intricacies of Ardra beetles are as yet not well understood, save that they are notoriously difficult to kill. Okay, I'll bear that in mind if I see an yes. Ardra beetle. Shh. Okay, what else are we going to find? Some more spiders. 
Nothing too terrible. Hey. Get out there, draw their attention, please. There we are. Okay. Now, Glindur, I would like you to move forward. I would like you to start attacking that one. Let's move you guys up a little bit. Mm -hmm. There we go. That's what we wanted. Now, Glindur, get in there. Uh, actually, Glindur, if you could attack yeah. him. There we go. That's good. Now, can you knock this one down? And then, would you kindly drop this on those four? There we go. And again. That might actually bring... It's probably going to down one of them, at least. If we can get that going. There we go. Glindur hits Spear Spider for 11 PS damage. Interrupted the Spear Spider. Heals to the Endurance. Fantastic, Glindur. Right, go for him. Oh, okay, they're all dying. Right, go for the Spear Spider then instead. And everyone get in there and attack the Spear Spider. There we go. Glinder has taken a little bit of damage, but he is healing his endurance as he's killing things. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so glorious. Truly wonderful. Take that. We'll take this. Mm -hmm. Let's get you all stealth again and move onwards. All right, what else are we going to find down here? Ooh, okay. So we've got some looters, some actual humans. Now, Glindura's weapon is going to be especially damaging for them. You can have that. I really need to start using those scrolls a little bit more than I am. Anything? Oh dear. Some beetles. Okay, well, that's fine. Glindur. Actually, is that Glindur? Yes. Right, let's get down, you down there. There we go. Oh no, actually, there was Kana. Fair enough. There we go. And let's drop some more spells on these guys. And you really may as well use his abilities. Since you're going to have them every single battle. It makes sense to try and use them. These enemies are actually remarkably hardy. So how about we swap to melee weapons and engage. There we go. Oh no. Not poisoned. Those scallywags. How dare they do this. Right, let's go for... We haven't got any level 3 spells that we can use. It's a bit of a shame. Um, yeah, let's go for all of them. Hey. There we go. Fantastic. And we're probably going to heal up before we go to the looters, honestly. Using a camping supply. Ooh. Very nice indeed. There we go. Absolutely fantastic. Our weapons are actually getting crazy Bar powerful now. Light in dark okay, let's see what we've got. We've got some silver. And... Some ripple sponge. Okay. I'll handle this. Oh, we can easily just open this door. There we are. Just wanted to get the experience. Counter is leveled up. Fantastic. Wow, you look different. In this screen. Okay, you've got good law, good mechanics. We're going to increase your athletics and your stealth. And actually, your, th your athletics again, I think. There we are. Right, okay. One doesn't stood against the power of the saint. Um, now let's go for something that'll hurt the enemy. I actually quite like this one. Frandiora, Drop, Trap, Rhyme, and Frost. Well, you don't really move around too much. Fox from the Farmer did Run and Leap. Hmm. No, actually, I think we're going to go with this one then. There we are. And let's set up Kana's new... Following your lead. Uh, ...chance setup. So we're currently only using three. Hmm. Turns Field of Terror, that's actually pretty good. This one emboldens allies in the area of effect, giving bonus to fortitude. Well, we may as well drop that one in as well. Bit of a long one, that, but okay. Alright, there we are. And with that, let's have a camp. There we go. All right, everyone's mm. spells are all reset, which is good for us. Now let's go and deal with those bloody looters. We'll take out our frustration at the fact that we have to 
Kill Meowald. Hello? Ah, there they are. I thought they might have skedaddled. Right, Looter. Gold Pack Knight. Really? Looter, Looter. Let's move forward just a tiny bit. Oh, okay. Right, let's pull you guys back a little. Right back. Let's get you back. Switch you to your gun. Glindur. Switch you to your gun as well. Yes. There we are. We're about to have a conflict. Go ahead and attack. And that's right. And engage. <laughs> right, okay. We've had our first engagement. That's fine. Switch to your weapon. Get in there. Glindur, do exactly the same. Get in there. You've actually got a good weapon against this, these types of people. In fact, actually, Glindur, go and take that looter out. Um, let's see. Let's actually use this. Give ourselves a big aura. And Minoletta's Bounding Missile. Let's go for you. Right, Glindur, you go ahead and engage him if you would be so kind. Right, okay. Now, if you would please knock over the Gold Pack Knight. No, no, no. no. Knock over the Gold Pack Knight. That's right. As for you, you're fine. Right, let's get these missiles dropped on them. Lindu should be able to take him out. Wow, that was a lot of damage there. How much did you did? Ancient memory, additional effect. Interrupted looter. Crits for 24 pierce damage. That is fantastic. And he healed for 4 endurance by doing that as well. Right, would you please knock down one of the... Uh, yeah, knock down that looter while you're at it. Let's get... Cook of a Mana Blight, but I don't think I will. We will hit our allies with that, but this will only hurt our enemies, so go for it. Oh dear, my allies moved around at the wrong moment there. You pull back a little bit, please. There we go. Lindu, walk around that for now. Hmm. Actually, I fancy that they that it doesn't stay on fire. So if you can just get in there, that would be ideal. Right, you guys are going to be able to take him out with ease, I imagine. And let's go ahead and use... No, we're going to keep that one, I think. Let's drop that. Well done. And now go with the Necrotic Lance. Alright, Glindur. I would like you to use this here, and Canna do exactly the same. There we go. There we go. Very nicely done. I right, get down there and engage them straight away. Finish them off if you can. Wow. Okay. Crits for seven pierce damage, and they were down. Absolutely wonderful, Glindur. Let's get you up there. You're actually turning into quite a competent fighter. And you guys can just uh, engage normally for now. There we go. Fantastic. Wow, have we really got two of this active? It looked like we did for a second. I wonder if the effects stack if it's two different chanters that do it. That would be potent. Okay, let's uh, loot these guys. We've got some helms, don't really care for. However, you will get the lockpicks. There we go. More lockpicks for Glindur. And finally, whatever this fellow had. A hat. Nothing we really care about. A uh, body up here, though. Uh, yeah, okay, we'll stick that in there as well. Okay, well, that is it. We have uh, explored this lower level as much as we can. There is a door that we can't go through. And we may unlock a way to that by speaking with the steward. Alright, let's head back up to the top. However, looking at the time, I think we're probably going to leave speaking with the steward for the next episode. So I'm just going to get back up there. Ooh. What? Hang on a second. I want to talk I'm to here. you. I? Damn it! I. So now I know yes. its name. 
Virago. Mm, must keep this. We must keep this knowledge and explore it later. But, uh... As I was saying, I think I'm going to wrap the episode up here, and then we can talk with the steward in the very next episode and find out a little bit more about this place, find out perhaps how to get through that uh, energy barrier, that, that magical bar barrier down on the lower level, and, of course, deliver the news that, unfortunately, Mirwald is gone. But uh, it's kind of nice little music in here now. I wonder if that's the steward. But that's going to be it from me. I do hope you've liked this episode and will be joining me for the next. But until then, and as always... Do take care.